can I have everybody's attention for a second or a couple minutes? Um, thank you all so much for being here today. Um, we've done other programs. We used a program called Watch Dogs the last couple of years. And um, we invited our dads to come and um, be our supports within the school to volunteer in their kids' classrooms. And that's what we've done the last couple of years. Me and our admin really talked about what we wanted that to look like going forward. And we were kind of paying this money for this program that we thought that we could probably do in-house and work with a broader range of our, um, our caretakers, the people that love our students. So that's where, that's where we're starting here today with our service dogs. Um, what we've done with our watch dogs, you would come in and you'd volunteer throughout the day in your classrooms. Um, me and our, one of our counselors, Ms. Fry, we're gonna work on different types of schedules where you could have the schedule where you're working within the classrooms that your students are in, or maybe there's a specific teacher that you would like to work with. Maybe um, working in the office and doing that administrative support might be something that you think that you'd wanna do volunteer in a school. Like, we're gonna create different opportunities for you all. So I just wanted to, I guess, start it off by just a big breakfast and a big thank you for you all just wanting to show up and wanting to be here and wanting to pour into our school. Uh, our goal is to be the best middle school in Hardin County. And eventually, you know, once we hit that step, we're going to become one of the best middle schools in the state. So we can't do that without you all, without the support of you, without, you know, the extra hands in the school building to help support our kids. So that, this is the start of that, I guess. Um, we're going to continue to, we'll probably do another like soft launch in December. I have worked on a, um, we use the website Calendly, and that's how we're going to send out the invitations. That's how we're going to get you all scheduled as volunteers. I got your names and your emails, so I'll be able to send the invites that way. Um, it'll be blocked off for just like one person a day. So if you all can give us one day out of the year, that would be amazing, and it would really, um, Show your students a lot. We have some of our former watchdogs that have showed up. Um, I don't know they really enjoy being in the school building and to watch their kids light up seeing them here. One of the neatest parts that I noticed from having volunteers in the building is the way that other students kind of attach to that person. And you might see that kid, that, um, kid in the morning, you know, and they do an assignment and then later in the day they want to talk to you about the other assignments that they've done and how their day has been. So, it's great to have more people in the building. We want to make sure that there are opportunities for you all to volunteer here. And we would just love that you're here and want, and want to be a part of this. Um, are there any questions at the moment or comments or concerns or maybe our principal wants to say something? So, for, yes, thank you. For those of you that haven't met me, my name is Mr. Webster and I'm the new principal here. Uh, and Jaron and I, we were engaged in conversations. There's a lie that goes around uh, in elementary school when the kids are really cute and they, you know, hormones haven't happened yet. Uh, everybody wants to be involved, right? So we got like classroom moms, classroom dads, we got parties, we got all that stuff. Then middle school happens, and for some reason, it has historically been as long as I've been in education, and even when I, when my parents had a middle schooler. Uh, nobody wanted, they didn't want to come around and they thought that the school didn't want them. That's a big lie. We absolutely want you. We want you in our buildings. We want you around. This doesn't work. Like we get them for six and a half hours a day and they come home with you for the rest of it. So we want to be an extension of you all and trying to raise really awesome oh, and humans and we want you to be an extension of us and trying to educate really awesome humans. Um, so we're really grateful that you're here. Uh, we we want to be high energy, and we also said that we could probably do it better, and it wasn't fair for some of our students because they didn't necessarily have, like they didn't fit into the box of the watchdog thing. And it wasn't fair to say like, we can't, you can't come volunteer in this organized group because you're a mom, or because you're a grandma, or because you're an aunt and uncle. We want, that's why it's dedicated adults with great students, and not just dads with great students, because we want everybody to be in there. We do have two opportunities coming up that we didn't tell Mr. Morning about. We're just going to throw those to you. The first is October the 3rd. Um, one thing that we that was very important for our SBDM, uh, 
uh, and Billy Claire over here is one of your parent reps on the SBDM. One thing that was really important was that we continue to make a strong culture uh, here at our school. We have a really interesting demographic. We're not quite Radcliffe, not quite E-Town, uh, and we want to embrace that. We want to be different than everybody else. So one thing that we're going to do is we're going to do our very first student staff tailgate on October the 3rd from 3.15 to 5.30. We're gonna provide some of the stuff as a school, like hot dogs, hamburgers, stuff like that. Uh, but we could use grills. We could use parents that wanna come and park their car and play loud music and wear red and black and be really excited. That's our homecoming. Um, so 3.15 to 5.30, we'll be here uh, having a big street party out by the football field. And if you wanna be a part of that, you can contact Mr. Morning or Ms. Fry, and they'll be happy for you to be a part of that. Uh, the next part, and also, we want our kids to stay here with us, because if they're with us, we know what they're doing. Similarly, if they're with you, you know what they're doing, and they're not like out roaming and doing things that they should, they, we don't want them to do. So that's why we're excited for that. We hope to have really big attendance. Uh, any kid that pays and gets a ticket is going to get a admission to the game, as well as the meal, the hot dog, chips, and drink for free. Uh, so that's all included in that that little ticket, so more of that will be coming. And then we have on October 20th, uh, what? Well, it's not Boo Fest, it's Barktoberfest. Barktober. Is that really what we called it? Barktoberfest, <clears throat> in coordination with New Highlands, uh, so we want to make sure that uh, we're supporting them, so that will be an opportunity for you to be a part of our campus. It's going to be for our part, it's going to be a trunk or treat, uh, so we would love for you to take it. It's October the 20th. So those are two coming up really great opportunities for you to get involved in our classroom or in our school community. And if you want to be involved in the classrooms, please, by all means, even if you just show up, make sure you get your background check taken care of. Uh, even if you just show up, we'll take care of you and we'll find a place for you to volunteer and a place for you to help uh, be connected with kids. I love, I came back to Hardin County because it's a community that, that we live in we love and we want to we want to retire from so like I will retire from this school and in three years it's going to be the best one in Hardin County and in five years it's going to be the best one in the state and you guys are at the ground floor um, so thank you for giving up your time thank you for those of you that uh, let, like let me stick this random flyer in your car yesterday and took it without even a question and showed up today so awesome so um, speaking about like background checks and like how we volunteer so with our service dog program, when you come into the school as a visitor, you get your, um, your ID scanned, and it does a quick background check right there. So as far as we're concerned here at Bluegrass, like that works for us. If you would like to be a district volunteer, and it's like a one-time sign-up for the, for the school year, you um, have to go to our Harding County Schools website, go to like where you would go for employment, and then you find the volunteer spot there. You can just type volunteer in there and you do that and that gives you like the full background check. Now it costs $10 a person, but that'll get you covered for the whole school year. And that'll be, like if you do that, like through Bluegrass, you'll be able to volunteer at any of our district schools. So, and we'll, and so you'll pay Bluegrass the $10. We will report that to the board. They'll find your application and they'll process you that way. Does that make sense? And if you have any questions, you can send me an email, give me a call, or give one of our administrators a call or an email, and we will walk you through that. Super easy. Um, but as far as like being a service dog and working here at Bluegrass, it's just showing up, getting the visitor badge, and we will put you to work in the most fun, capable way. Um, we love competition here. We're doing a Bulldog Bowl. So every morning, the kids come into the school at 740. They go to the, they go to the gym. And they're in there until about 8.05, right around 7.55, 7.58. Me and Mark will um, come up with some kind of game for them to compete in. We'll pull a couple kids out of the, out of the bleachers, and they get to compete. And they've been um, acquiring points. And we're going to have a big pep rally going into the fall break. And speaking of competition, we're doing a fantasy football league like within our staff. And me and Mark faced off in week one. And I won. <laughs> And I just, I, I didn't know how I could seamlessly work that into any conversation, so. <laughs> Ultimately, he does. 
and he's gonna have he's gonna have to put winner on there somewhere. <laughs> All right. So there's plenty of donuts, muffins, pastries, Nutrigrain bars, forks. Um, I think the coffee's working now, and it's really good. Um, so yes, yeah, this is great. So. If you have any questions, I'm here. We're all kind of here. There's Mr. Gibbs. He's one of our assistant principals. There's Ms. Pleasant, another assistant principal, Ashley Fry. And we got Mr. Butler, our other counselor, and Fry is a counselor as well. So our administration is here. We have questions for them too. So, so I'll be sending out a Calendly invite to everyone that registered on our sign-in sheet. All right. School, yes, as many folks here as possible, and whatever you want to do, we know that some of you can donate an hour, we'll take it. If you can donate a whole day, awesome. If you can donate every month, every week, it doesn't matter. Uh, teachers are definitely overworked and for sure underpaid, and they could use any sort of help that you're willing to give them in the classroom. Uh, and the most important thing is uh, you pay dividends, and the only thing when you donate time, that's the only thing you can't get back. So that says a lot about your commitment to the community. And again, from Karen and our administrative team, I'm really grateful that you're here. We have great kids. Thank you for loaning us your kids. We have a lot of fun with them. Uh, we just randomly decided to compete one day, and it's been a thing that they've started to look forward to and get really excited about. Uh, sixth grade, if you have a sixth grader, we got to work on some of those like body kinesthetic learning. They're not, they haven't figured it out yet. But seventh and eighth grade, they figured it out. They're pretty, they're pretty great about it. So. Thanks for being here, uh, and please take a box of donuts. To <laughs> we have a lot. We have a lot of donuts. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of how many donuts we have. They will end up being fed to teachers. I'll probably take one home to my wife. She likes me sometimes. So I try. Do you have sign up sheet, or you just wait for the email? Uh, if you signed up on your on the sign-in sheet, Jaron is going to send you a Calendly invite with some dates that he'll have organized times, uh, and you can check on those. If that doesn't work for you, just shoot us an email. Our school email address is bgmsinfo at harden.kyschools.us. Uh, that's a great way to get a hold of us. It comes to me, and then what I do is I delegate whatever thing is in there. So if it's like service dogs, it'll go to Jaron, and he'll get back in touch with you. We try to do that within 24 hours if you communicate with us. Uh, but he's going to send out that Calendly invite so that you have access to that. If it works in your schedule, awesome. If it doesn't, if that doesn't mean you can't volunteer, just tell us the day that you're going to be here, and we will happily put you to work. Yeah. Happily. we got plenty of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What are some, besides that, I mean, in the front office admin and PT, they figure it out and figure out how to get What are our expectations of what you're going to, like, in a classroom, what the team would do, what they want us to do, like, what are our ideas of what we're volunteering for? Yeah. So, in, in a lot of cases, the way that we've used volunteers uh, in that in the past or how I've used volunteers uh, is another set of hands in the classroom. So for example, if you're in a math class, they might be doing small group stations and you might help monitor one of those stations and help like keep kids on task. Uh, it's not about teaching kids in, a, in any way, shape or form. You know, that's the, te the classroom teacher's job. But it is like, it sort of depends on where you end up. Um, in a lot of our you know, like our LI classrooms, having extra hands down there to assist with uh, moving kids around the classroom in the space, that's super helpful. Uh, in the cafeteria, is super helpful. Cafeteria duty is my favorite part of the day. It is quite literally this. You walk to the table, trade a couple jokes with some kids, make sure they're doing the right thing, and then you walk off and you just kind of do that. Being in the cafeteria, it's really just about your physical presence and not necessarily like, we're not going to have a checklist of things that we want you to do. It's just being here to say, like, I value and care enough about you that I'm here. I value and care enough about your our school community that I'm here to do whatever is necessary. Yeah. Sometimes we will have that, and sometimes we won't. You're not just signing up for You won't teach anything, I promise. Unless you want to. Unless you're really good at math, and then...
we've got some openings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you have a bachelor's degree and you've ever thought about teaching, come see me later. I'm glad we you. Yeah, you're hired. <laughs> Open interviews. <laughs> Edit that out. Please. Except you're higher. Am I working finished? I don't know what to do. Mr. Wynn wants to. Well, he can share like some of his experience as being a watchdog. Did you come twice last year? I, I came one. I applied to come again, but I had to go somewhere. I okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, what it did, um, like he said, he'll work with you. Um, I have two, we have two daughters here, so he made sure the house in their class. I think one of them I was in twice, the other one I was in one. So I was able, and just like he said, like I'll go, I'll see the student, and they'll see him again, like three or four years later, and they have like a big smile on their face. Um, and that's when they start opening up, because in the beginning, they don't, they don't know what to expect. But when they see you again, they more open up, like what he says, with sixth grader, seventh grade, eighth grader. Um, one thing, just like the principal said, we're not there to teach. The main thing we control the distraction is amazing. As soon as that teacher is focused on one person, everybody else starts playing with their hair, playing with their phone, or, or do something. And you just go there and say, hey, knock it off, or put that away, or pay attention. Just small little thing, because then you'll see the student asking, when the teacher finishes his or her lesson, they're like, what are we doing? What's that? And it's just a matter of telling them, hey, pay attention from the big beginning, because it's going to affect them and affect those people around them. So a lot of it is just that simple distraction um, that, that each student do, and you just kind of help control that. But I love it. And then even at lunchtime, um, we had a thing where, one, you know, I, when I was there, when the student was acting up, they had them sit separate. And he could, you know, and he's sitting, he's eating in front of me, so nothing else to do other than talk to me, right? <laughs> and then I found out that, you know, he obviously he had a deaf in the family, and he was acting out in a, a, in a, a you know, disruptive way kind of thing. Just allow him to talk and then have him walk away with a little bit, you know, hopefully he felt better. So just walk those small little interaction that might not be much, but hopefully it means a lot to them. So it was a good experience. And that they might not be getting at home. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah it's, um, it's neat, you know, just working in a school and working with kids and you just don't know what, what all's going on at home in different families. Like whether it is something that's chronic or whether it's something that just popped up and it's a traumatic experience they're dealing with now. But um, it's neat being in school because school can be a constant. School doesn't really change that much. You know, you, cut, you are getting on a bus or getting dropped off and it's the same routine. So kids with changing things going on at home can go to school and, you know, slide back into the same routine. You know, just to be a part of that, to be a support for kids is amazing. I don't even, like, I didn't even tell you what my role here is at Bluegrass. I'm the Youth Service Center Coordinator. Uh, my role is to help remove non-cognitive barriers that might keep a kid from learning. So day to day that might look like school supplies or somebody gets water dumped on them and needs some clothes. You know, so I'm taking care of those kind of things throughout the day. But also, it's bringing in people that might be filling in some of the gaps that um, kiddos aren't getting at home, or um, finding some mental health services to help a student or a family out. We have helped with like rent assistance and things like that because those are barriers. You know, might not be affecting them in the school day, but to have that stress at home, you know, something that's definitely in the way of their learning. So, like that's what I do here. Um, I'm running a Girls on the Run program right now. We have 12 kiddos signed up, and it's, it's a lot of what, 12? No, we have seven kids signed up. We have 12 kids in my attendance group that I work with to um, help kind of figure out what their barriers are that are keeping them from coming to school. But I do small groups like that throughout the school year and things like this. So that's me. I went flag football, or fantasy football. <laughs> I, think they, I think they can tell why you're winning because your numbers keep getting inflated. <laughs> I got 12, oh wait, seven. Were the numbers inflated in our fantasy league? Yes. Were they though? Yes. Were they though? <laughs> so the research suggests that four positive, in, like four adults that are non-related to you uh, will keep a student or bring a student that is engaged in risky behavior uh, back into like right living 
So four meaningful adult connections with adults that are non-familial like relationships. Um, and I think like one thing that hopefully you will see and hear from your kids is that they know that we care about them. We have high expectations for them. We, we've made some adjustments and things that they've griped a little bit about. Uh, and, but they've complied with them and they've found that they like their life a lot better when they're not as distracted and they have some, some positive adult interactions. So, like, Officer Javi is here and he's great with our kids. He's another resource. Like, he's, he walks around, he's got a badge on, and some of our kids have negative experiences with that and they come to school and they get to interact with Javi and he's respectful to them and talks to them about football or whatever they're experiencing and they get to, to have a reinvention of what they are experiencing outside of the world. So uh, we, we love our kids a lot. Sometimes they drive us absolutely crazy because we have 600 of them. Uh, we expect our school to continue to grow uh, even more now that Blue Oval is coming in and they're getting the new, um, new core at Fort Knox and then that is expanding. So we're expecting that we're going to get a lot more students. Um, and Jaron's essential to that. Uh, his position is mandated by law. So that is one great thing that the legislature did in Frankfurt is they said you need people in your schools to help reduce those uh, barriers. So. You can see our attendance is up 1.5 points from last year. That's cycled through there. So our average August attendance last year was 93, 93%. Now we're almost at 95. So we're pretty excited about that. And tomorrow's high attendance day? Tomorrow is high attendance day. The kids don't know it yet, but we're going to make it a pajama day for them. I hate pajamas, by the way. Uh, <laughs> nobody has taken over the world in leggings or pajama pants, by the way, which is what I tell people. Um, but we're going to, we just want to beat John, so we're going to make it a pajama day. And then we're going to have a, a popsicle and relaxed party in the afternoon for any kid that shows up to school uh, tomorrow. So if you want to be part of that, High attendance day for parents too. Uh, we'll count it. If you want to wear pajamas, you know that's fine too. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll let them duct tape Jaren to the wall. We're not going to. If you want another donut, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. 